Hey guys, <clears throat> I just got a package and I just cracked the top of it. It's from uh, Gulf Coast Ecosystems. Um, their website, I will put a link to it, but it's um, live-plants.com and um, it's all macro algaes. It's a great site. I suggest you go take a look at it. Um, they've got all types of macro algaes, uh, gorgonians, snails, and uh, sponges. So I got a, a package of an assorted package. So right away we open it up, we see we got some styrofoam on the sides, two heat packs. Uh, they're kind of done. It comes priority mail because it's not as, it's, um, it, it's a little more hardy than say corals or fish. So they, it took about two days to get here. So it's wrapped up in newspaper. Let's take the little thermometer here. And it's looking like 72 degrees in the box. Uh, it's not too cold out today, so it should be fine. Um, put on my glasses and try and see if I can figure out what everything is that I ordered. Okay. Um, it looks like a lot of my snails may be together. I got some syrinth snails, I got some nearite snails, and some nasarius snails. And they don't pack them in much water. Um, I've gotten snails before and this is the norm for, for getting snails. So we're going to put them all in their own little um, aquarium and make sure they come to life before we add them to the main aquarium. Okay, I've got something called Hepnia Pinosa. And you really can't see it, but it's a blue macroalgae. Um, similar to Chato, but not really. It has more of a webbed uh, growth pattern. And I believe this is a purple frilly gorgonian here. And it comes on a frag plug. So that'll be interesting. And here I have a pound of live sand. Uh, it's looking to get some microfauna in it. Um, yeah, I see little guys moving around in there. I see some kind of microfauna, some kind of pod life. And then uh, codium. I got a really nice size bag of codium, which was one of my favorite macroalgaes. I had before um, the the uh, when I started using Chato, I kind of out competed it. But that's a whole bunch of codium in there, and codium is a branching. It almost is gorgonian-like codium. It branches off and it actually gets a fuzz on it. So that's pretty cool. This, I think, is a red macroalgae sampler. So there's three different types of red macroalgae in here. Um, it'll be interesting to see what's actually in here. It's funny that one of them's dragon's breath, and I have lots of dragon's breath. A very good portions, though. Um, you know, you really can't see what they are in a bag anyway. So as I get them out, and when I show you, we will go over what they are. But I've gotten portions of macroalgae from other vendors, and they are nothing like this. And the price is about the same. So definitely getting a lot of macroalgae. And then the last bag is my sponges. I have an elephant's ear orange sponge. Um, what is it? A red finger sponge. And a yellow ball sponge. So these are all awesome looking. Okay, I took a 10 gallon Aquion tank and I took 5 gallons of my tank water and put it in here. So this is how we're going to make sure that nothing it's going to come out of here that's going to harm my main tank. Basically make sure all the snails are moving, 
and uh, see if any big critters crawl out. But you guys know me. I love the critters. So, start by just opening this bag up. And this is uh, Bryothemonian. Bryothemonian. And yes, I only cut one bag. Look at me. Let me cut through the other bag. This is a very nice red macroalgae. Um, uses calcium, so it has a harder outside to it. Um, fish tend not to want to eat this as much, but it is beautiful red color. Nice healthy pieces all held together. Uh, this is something that as it grows you want to separate it a little bit. This is the blue one that Murph told me to get. Hap Hapnia Pinosa. Hapnia Pomosa. Pinosa. I'll spell all of this when I do the edit. Now it doesn't appear to be blue and it is smaller pieces. Um, see if I can read more about that one. It is a very dark green. And it's pretty cool looking. This one seems to have a little uh, a barnacle or something stuck to it. So that's what's cool. This is definitely a little piece of live rock rubble. So it's really cool getting stuff from these uh, guys who go out and dive for the stuff. Now this is the Codium. And guys that used to follow me when I just had my little nano cube. I used to use Codium all the time. It's really a cool looking macro algae. And it almost grows kind of like a, a cactus. And it gets fur on it when it's happy. Like a Gorgonian. So it's, it's got a different body, you know, different cell structure than most of your other macro algaes. So again, very healthy portions, four or five big pieces in here, you know, they all look healthy. Okay, this almost looks like a grape calerpa, but it's red. Um, some of the sprouts on the ends are green. That's a really cool piece. I think I was looking at it in there um, on the site and it said it was out of stock or I would have ordered some. I'm glad it was in the sampler. Um, some more of what I had a big bunch of. I uh, forget the name of it. This first one that I did. There's even some other kind of algae stuck into it. Some green algae. So that's definitely cool. Oh, and it's not Dragon's Breath. It looks like a, a Gracilla almost. A red gracilla. Wow, that's got a smell to it. <laughs> Should I pour this nutrient rich pink water into my little bag here? I think so. Sure, why not? Plants gotta eat, right? Oh, you know what? There is a fourth in there. There's some dragon's breath in there as well. So the macroalgae sampler actually gave me four different species in there. Um, you guys know I have plenty of dragon's breath. This is similar to my dragon's breath where it is um, a very rigid body. So I think this is the one that does really well that I have in my other tank. You'll see it. I don't know if you can see that back there, but I have some already. Yeah, purple frilly gorgonian is what I ordered. 
who knows if that's exactly what it is but you definitely get a nice size piece I must say and it is photosynthetic so we're not going to run into issues I don't want to damage it. I'm going to cut the bottom off this bag. Thank God for dollar store scissors. You know, I use them a few times. Pitch them right in the garbage. Oh, that is an awesome color. I don't know if you guys can actually see that. That's a beautiful piece. You know, something like that was, I think, $10. So, I didn't spend $100, including shipping. I think it came out right to about $100. my sponges. Let me move this Gorgonian over. I sure don't want anything happening to him. Oh, and then I just drop a whole bag on him. He's fine though. Okay, I know some sponges don't like to dry out. I don't know that it um, I think they can come out of the water for a moment, but they don't like to be held out of water. So this is the elephant ear orange sponge. And I got the red finger sponge, and there's actually two pieces of that. That's really cool looking. And of course, the ball sponge. The ball, you think it would roll, right? There we go. So these are going to be some really cool pieces as well. The only thing left is the snails um, and the live sand, but I'm not going to quarantine the live sand. Um, I want everything that's in there in my deep sand bin. These guys are supposed to be packed in straight oxygen and a little water. I guess the reason for that is they could probably pollute a bag of water pretty quickly. And then it would just be a bag of ammonia and they would, you know, kill them if they didn't have a way to crawl out. Probably put them all right in one pile here. Let's see if anybody's moving. Is that everybody? No, oh, we got two little guys right there on the lip. So a little top-down view. Look at the purple on that gorgonian. Sorry about the shop light, guys. The color on the sponges is incredible. Well, I thought I'd do a little time lapse of um, how I attach them to rocks. Most of these macroalgaes will not root and take root onto the rock, so um, and some will. But in the beginning, you want to weight them down so they're not blowing around the tank and they stay where you want them put. And uh, so a little rubber band around a rock, sink them to the bottom. I didn't actually aquascape the tank today, but um, I did want to get them all situated. So some of the smaller pieces I put in my main refugium on my main display. And we'll grow them out, just let them float amongst the uh, other dragon's breath that's in there. And uh, this is, you know, that's how I did it. It's important not to make the rubber bands too tight where you actually cut them in half either. And now you see them in the tank. So make sure you check out this um, Gulf Coast ecosystem. And I'll leave the link down in the uh, description. 
And when you go to their page, also check out their free guide. Uh, besides going through each macroalgae and seeing the requirements of it, there's a free guide that talks about nutrition and lighting and all. So another thumbs up from Dave's Nano Tanks. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I know this was a long one, but there was just so much to cover.